Hello Internet! In this video we're going to go through and create a React app with TypeScript, the script of types, and we're going to be creating a, an application where we can do some testing of our typing speed. Ooh, doesn't that sound fun? Uh, so uh, what we need to do for this, uh, I've already gone and done this, but you need to do uh, create React app. I've already gone rogue. Uh, yep, create React app, give it a name, so in this case to do, but I'm going to call it type tester, but I've already done this, dash dash template, dash dash type script. If you have not got create Ra react app installed, you need to do npm i dash g and then create react app or something like that. Yeah, that's it, create react app. And then that will install that for you. Ooh, that would be nice. Ooh. Uh, anyway, uh, so I've done that. What we've got is just the bog standard react app uh, that's all gravy um, so yeah nothing nothing cool here I'm gonna quickly start the application up using yarn start so we're gonna be using yarn as the package manager for this as well not npm so don't do npm install if we do any installing any packages which I don't think I'm gonna do but oh well okay so look oh here is the application uh, I'm gonna stick the console up just so we can see stuff as we start coding stuff and we start changing stuff because this is gonna help us understand uh, TypeScript with React. Uh, it's gonna help us understand the life cycle of the React components. Ooh. Uh, so it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna do it in a basic one file and then if at the end I feel really cool, we might refactor it into several different components. But it depends how long it takes to actually get the damn thing to work. Oh, so I've been rambling on enough. Let's just have a goosey goosey gander at what's going off. So um, app.tsx. Ooh. Okay, right. So first thing I want to do is I want to change this from a function uh, to a class that extends component. Now, it's going to moan at me for two things now. Uh, if you're looking over at the right, oh, it needs an identifier. Uh, so first thing, that sh that's wrong. Uh, seven is wrong. Yeah, so what's what's happening here is that we are, I've changed this to a class, but now we're just returning from a class, which you don't do. What we need to do is we need to have a render function. Ooh. Okay, so, and literally all we can do here is just do this. Uh, render, like that. Come all the way down here. Quickly get rid of that semicolon. No one likes semicolons. Get rid of that. Come back up here. Move that in. Save, there we go, hit the right key. Okay, now it can't find the component. So to import the component, come up to React, comma, component. So that's a destructuring input. That's why we've got, these braces are basically a destructuring input, right? So this is not um, a default, component is not a default export of React. So we have to do destructuring to get it out of there. Ooh, uh, whereas React is default. That's why we don't have to have the little brackets around react just a little aside there in case you're wondering what for uh there's another thing i want to do actually it's really annoying just make sure i get rid of all the semicolons because no one likes semicolons uh they are absolutely horrible and i also want to get rid of uh double quotes and substitute them for single quotes i really do need to do some sort of type testing because i can't i can't type right so uh at the moment we have uh this app Let's get rid of everything except for the main div. So one thing to note here is that in the render function, what we're returning looks like HTML, but it is not HTML. You'll notice here it says class name, but in HTML, proper HTML, it will say class, right? So if I was to change this to class, what's gonna happen? Anyone guess? It's gonna moan, because that's not even a thing. So this, this is really uh, JSX, or in this case, TSX. Uh, which stands for JavaScript XML something. I can't remember. And, you know, obviously TypeScript XML something, which I can't remember. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just something to note here is that we have to return one of these elements, right? Now, you can return one element that has many nested elements, right? So this is totally valid to do, a, you know, H1 inside here, right? And if I do a... Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll start actually writing stuff, so we'll say something like um, typing test, yep, 
Uh, we don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. But now it's fine. It's compiling fine because we've got div and we've got h1. So we've got uh, h1 inside that div. We're only returning one element, the div, that happens to contain other things. Right? So we've now got a, a little thing there. If I were to instead just move this to here, right, it's going to moan. Pass an error. JSX expressions must only have one parent. So we can't return two elements. We have to return a single element. This makes total sense because if you think about a normal JavaScript or TypeScript function, you can't do this. You can't say uh, return, you know, string and then also have another return statement that does zero. That's stupid. But that's essentially the equivalent of what we just done there. We've had two return statements. We've got these two, two elements. Um, so with that out of the way, let's actually start doing some stuff. So we've got a h1. We'll just call that. Uh, shall we change that? We'll change that. We'll say test your typing speed, scrub. Uh, and then we want to do some other stuff. So we'll have a h3. Miss the h. Type the following. Eh there uh, and then we need to have um we need to actually have some words to type so we'll put that in a h6 there we are there's the h6 words dot 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 because we haven't done that yet we haven't got any words to type uh and then what else are we going to need let's just have a look at it oh look at that it's all working we're going to need uh something called an input so you can do input um nothing at the moment i don't think we need anything at the moment just have it blank oh look there's our input type in there nothing happens okay fine should i make that a bit bigger really has done nothing we'll make it a tiny bit bigger um right so what are the next things we need to do then well we've got our render function that's doing some rendering i think the first thing we should probably do is define what what is the thing that we're going to be typing out right so ideally when you load this application it gives you a, a a paragraph or some sentences to type or something like that right so for the time being let's just hard code it but we'll make it nice later if i can be bothered but i'll make it so that you could easily change this so we'll create something called state right like this and in state we're going to have a variable called type test or something like that maybe yep type test and type test is going to be a string so we'll say uh this is the sentence to type like that and that's all good um and if we were to say just whack this in here for example so the way we can get this state in here is we need to do double squiggly braces this dot state dot type test oh and then i also need to do another squiggly brace at the end obviously uh and something's gone tits up why is it already gone tits up do i need double squiggly braces or do i need single squiggly braces i need single squiggly braces why did i say double i don't know oh well here we go okay cool this is the sentence to type so that shows up there right now this is a bit naff because what we really want to do right is we want to have um some sort of way of knowing if we've done something wrong and this is why we use typescript because at the moment this is stupid because we're not actually using typescript we've just got the state right which is a, a react thing that we'll get into um but we have no way of knowing is type test meant to be a string is it meant to be a number what is it meant to be i don't know well so for example at the moment, let's say I, uh, I don't know, uh, we'll do, uh, mm, just get rid of it. We'll get rid of that and we'll, we'll swap it for the number zero. Oh, look at that. It's totally fine, even though clearly we don't want zero there, but it's going to show up fine, whatever. What I we'll actually want to do is I want to define an interface and say, we'll call the interface state, or you can call it whatever the hell you like. Um, call it state, and then I'll start defining stuff. So, for example, type test is going to be a string so now 
when I give this a type and say this is a state, look to the right of the screen when I press save, get ready, three, two, one, bang, it's going to error. Oh, fail to compile because we can't assign a number to string. But what we can do is we can assign a string to string and then it will stop moaning. And I've got rid of the thing that was in the register. Great. I've got to retype out the sentence to type. This is the sentence to type. There we go. Oh, God, he's going to say, come on, save. There we go. So um, now we have an interface. That's that's why we, why would we define something like that? Well, we define something like that because we want to um, make sure that this actually works correctly. We could also uh, define this as a type. But no, we can't. Ignore that. Forget that. Forget I even said that. We'll get to types later. Ignore me. Just pretend I'm not here. Okay, so now I've got this is the sentence to type. What do we need to do next? Well, what we need to do next really is I think we need to have some way of figuring out what happens when when we load we we should really take the word the sentence that we've we've loaded so we could load this from anywhere right when the when the app loads we could load this from a, a some file somewhere we could just randomly generate a sentence we could do whatever we like so this could be dynamic right so what we want to do when the sentence loads is we want to take that sentence and get the words right because what we want to do is we want to check that every word that is typed in is correct. So I think we need to actually define a new thing in our interface and we'll say words is an array of strings. Yeah. And now it's going to moan because we've missed something from our interface, right? We've missed the property words. A little thing to note here is if I do this, it's fine. What this question mark means is that this is now an optional value. This is something quite interesting that you might need to use. So now we can define the state without having that there. Um, and that also essentially is also saying that this can be undefined. So there's an implicit what's called a type union in TypeScript, which is basically saying that it's like this, it's undefined. And this will be fine as well because we haven't got it there. If I get rid of that optional though, but keep the type union, uh, it's going to moan because it's not optional, but it needs to be, right? It should moan anyway. Yeah, it moans because we're missing the state. So um, we we should ideally have um, this defined in the state, and we will have it defined in the state, uh, but we can make it optional if we wanted to that way. Just a little thing on type unions and optional stuff. Uh, so now, obviously, I need to define words, and I'm going to initialize it as an empty array. Next thing we need to learn about is something called um, React hooks, right? So the, these are things that React has defined for us, right? They're methods that we can call, provided we give it the right name. Um, so you know how normally when you call a function, you could just do something like, oh, print, right? And you, you would just say print, and the print thing would do the printing, ooh, right? With React, there are other things that we can call, like, for example, a component did mount. So what this is, is when the component loads, do some stuff, right? So uh, if I do a console log and say hello, and we'll look at this, something's gone wrong. Uh, oh, I need to put a comma there. Yep, cool. So now it says hello, right? Um, it only says hello when this loads. That's it. That wasn't really very interesting. Um, but what, what we should probably do in the component, component did mount is I think we should initialize that words array. Um, and the way we do that is we are going to do a split of the type test, right? So we'll say this state type test split split the spaces um, and then that's fine but what we actually how do we set this well do we just do this state type test equals that no we do not so the idea of state in react is that 
state is um, supposed to be immutable, right? So you can't, in fact, let's, let's show you what happens, right? You can't assign new values to this. There is a caveat to that because you can modify things, but that's just a result of TypeScript and, well, JavaScript, really. But if I do that, uh, da -da -da. firstly, I haven't typed it right, but if I do type test, it should moan. Ah, uh, it's not moaning. I might have done something wrong. Okay, right, so it's it's not completely moaning, it's just warning. Do not mutate direct state directly, use set state instead. The idea is that this really should be immutable, but it's not, so it's going to moan about it. So what it's telling us to do instead of doing this is to do uh, this set state and then we need to set it by passing in basically a you know an object uh, that matches what we want to set so in this case it's words like that now the reason we want to do this as opposed to just mutating things directly is because then we're mutating things as part of the React lifecycle. So when React decides it wants to do this, it will do this. This is more efficient because React will often group things together to actually um, update them. Uh, and also, there is a slight caveat to this, and it's that things don't necessarily update when you think they update. And we'll get to that in a bit. But now this is uh, set. So if I was to do... Um, We'll just, we'll, just, we'll just trust that that's set for now. Okay, so what is the next thing we need to do? Well, the next thing we need to do then is I think we need to... Hmm, let's think about this. What do we need to do? Uh, shall we add... Ah, right. We need, to get, we need to get stuff from the input, right? So if I... How do we get stuff from the input uh, with React? Well, we need to have, uh, we can use the React lifecycle and the React state to actually figure this out. So there's a thing we can use called onChange, right? And this we can pass a function to. So we can say this on word change. Now, we haven't defined this on word change yet, so it's going to moan about that, but it doesn't matter. We can define that now and just say on word change and if I just define it as a normal function I don't think I want anything to do I want to pass this for anything yes we do want to pass this to something I'm going to show you another problem as well with react that well not react this is typescript but this is going to moan at us we'll define it as an arrow function because we can a little lambda um, but you see where I've just put e here right what on word change takes because this is being called from the on change function is it's going to take um, a change event uh, with a HTML input, and at the moment it's going to moan at us when we when we do this. It's going to moan that something's gone wrong uh, because it's an any type. I've done a video on the any type error specifically, but I just want to show you this now because you might not have seen that video. Uh, we've got a parsing error. Where is the parsing error? Because I don't see it. Line nineteen. Right there, that should be equals. Yes, parameter E implicitly has any type. So that's TypeScript saying you don't want to be using any type. Uh, it's set on your strictness of your TS config file. Um, and you really should listen to it because it will help you catch errors. So we need to pass the type. And like I say, it's going to be a change event with HTML input. When I say this, it's going to moan at me because we haven't imported change event. So we need to get that from up here and do change event like that. And now it's going to compile. So what happens when we type in here now? So if I type in T, just as an example, we have this thing that shows up in the console and this has some all this interesting stuff. What happens when I do something else? What happens when I type in E? Oh, look at that. Anytime you type in a letter or get rid of a letter, something gets logged to the console. Which means that this, this function on word change is getting called anytime there is a change to this input, which is what you'd expect, right? But that's what's happening there. Now, this isn't very good because what we need to do is we need to keep hold of what's being entered so we can actually play with it, right? 
So we could do that in the on word change, but I think what we really should be doing is saying value is equal to uh, what should we call it? Enter text. This state entered text. Okay. We'll stick that on a new line. Okay, it's going to moan at us because obviously I haven't got entered text, but if I do on the interface, entered text, string, and then do this, entered text, and I know I've forgotten the comma, so don't even say anything. We'll initialize that as an empty string. Good stuff. That's all compiling fine. So what we now need to do then is we need to get um, that information from this event. So we need to get the entered text from the event and set it as entered text, and then we can use entered text later on as the value of the input, which sounds very weird, but it's cool. It will work. So um, what we need to do then is let's do our log for the time being current target dot value. That's where the actual value is, right? So if I was to type in test, we can see that, oh, look at that, that shows up. Now the problem is, it's only keeping hold of whatever letter I have at the moment. And that's because we've got that value function, right? So it's getting rid of it every time um, the app reloads. So the app reloads, enter text is a blank string. So I type in that, well, not reload, should I say. It, um, it re-renders. So it re-renders this with a no nothing in there. So we can never type in more than one character, which is why we need a set value. Um, so if we come down here, what I want to do is I want to say, uh, can't entered text is equal to E, current target dot value. It's gonna moan because it's not being used, doesn't matter. What I then want to do is I want to say this set state. And now here we can just pass in entered text like that and it will recognize it and it will know. So I don't have to do, um, why is that not going to let me move? I don't have to do entered text like that because the variable is called the same thing. So it will just recognize it and be like, right, we'll set entered text as that correctly. So if we have a look now, this will now let me type in full words. And you can see down here that it keeps hold of the full value. So, uh, do, 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 do. right. I think what we should next do is we need to implement the logic to do some te to check the word actually is correct, right? This is actually really simple. All we need to do is say if entered text triple equals, because we want to check the type as well, state dot words is equal to zero. Then, um, so what does this mean? What this means is, I also probably should trim this in case there's a space because we don't care about the space. Um, what this is going to do is check the the current word. So what we're going to do is we're going to mutate this. If if the user gets the word right, we're going to take the first element out of this words list. So we're always comparing with the first element. That will make more sense in a second. I just realized it didn't make too much sense. But if I do console log and just do right. So if I do this, right, so if I type in this, see how it types in this, and then we match this with this, and it, it says right. Now it's not going to check is yet, because we've still got it, uh, this in the first one. So if I typed in this wrong, it won't match as right. But if I type it in right with the correct capitalization, it will log right, because we've actually got it correct. So the next thing we need to do then is implement some basic logic to actually modify things. Um, another thing I wanted to do as well is if I do, uh, da, 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 we'll add a thing for the correct count. So just so we can see how many words we've got right. This state correct count. Of course we don't have that yet so we'll add that to the interface. So do Correct count is dash zero. Append this thing to that. Come down here. 
and I've spelt that wrong and this is a good thing actually you can see in state I've spelt this wrong so this is gonna moan at me because I've spelt it wrong uh, it's also gonna moan at something else as well because I haven't closed that correctly yeah now it's moaning because I haven't spelt this wrong this is another reason to use an interface because now we can see that we've got something wrong even though it's not a type it's just a spelling error okay so um, so what do we need to do well let's if we get this correct then we need to next uh, increment this correct count how do we do that that's simple we use set state again so we can th do this this dot set state uh, and then we want to say correct count uh, is equal to this state dot correct count plus one and if I do this okay uh, that's all good so that's going to increment the count right so now if I were to type in this it's going to say one this it should say two right there you go that's a bit daft because it's not fully working at the moment now the next thing to do I think is to reset the entered text so we can do uh, this whoops set state and do entered text oh my god if only someone had a typing test game that I could do to actually learn how to type eh yep that'll work okay so what's going to happen now is I type in this if I type it incorrectly it's going to disappear this 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 it will just disappear um, the next thing I want to do is I want to do something ever so slightly wrong to show you something so what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, where do we need to do this Mm, if I do this here this should I think I can show you this correctly yes yeah if I do this here this will work so what I want to show you is how the this state this set state function is working because I know I mentioned earlier that this doesn't necessarily set state at the moment you call it react will do some magic behind the scenes so if I was to do um, uh, this uh, da, 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 yeah no wait uh, hmm. let's do uh, okay a better way of showing you this let's say this set state and I will do uh, words this st uh, state words slice one because we obviously just want to slice one um, what we can do where's the thing where's the thing what oh it's there okay I couldn't find the bracket if we then do a console log and do console log um, this dot state so we're going to do a console log this dot state here and I'll do a console log uh this dot state here so what's going to happen is when we go into on change we're going to see console log of the state what the hell did i just do there um and then when we've done some editing of state and we've got the words right we're going to see another state and the reason i want to show you this is i want to show you that they shouldn't have changed even though you'd think well we've just set the state they should have totally changed but they won't have changed so if i do uh this oh my god this so this is the one before so this is the one from line 24 line 24 is here this is the one from before and this is the one after line 33 is the one after line 24 we can see um, that we have six in the array and afterwards when we have sliced the array and it should be shorter look at that it isn't 
five. It should be five, right? We've taken one out. Why is it not five? And again, the enter text should be empty, but it's not. Why is it not empty? Now, if I type anything else now, if I just type something else, it will be empty and we should have five in the array. And the reason is that we're dealing with the React lifecycle. So we're saying to set state, but React won't set state until the next time we actually re-render things, right? This It's not doing anything at this point. It will do it when it re-renders it. So just trust that React is going to do things right. But this does bring a problem. What if I want to modify state and then do something, which is what we actually want to do here. Well, in, in this one function call, I want to modify state and then do some stuff afterwards. And what we need to do to do that is we need to uh, call another function from set state. So when, when set state gets called, when that actually is updated, we call another function. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, do we need to do anything else first? Yeah, we probably do actually. Um, <laughs> no, we don't. Let's do that now. So uh, if I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that. What I now want to do is here, we are going to have as a second argument to this dot set state, we're going to pass in a function, a higher order function. So it's a lambda little thing, so we could you know do it as a little anonymous function here. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to call another function. That's all we're doing. The reason we're doing it like this is because this is re like returning void. So I can I should be able to just do this, give it a type if I really wanted to. I don't need to. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, why am I over there? I don't know. Okay, void, and we'll say this check finished. So when we ch when we check if we've actually finished, what we want to do is we want to check the we've typed everything that we're supposed to have typed. So we need to create a new function. Obviously we'll call it check finished. And do I need to pass anything at this point? No, because we're going to be using the state. So we'll say check finished. Uh, we'll make it a lambda as well, because why not? Say make this return void. We'll do this. And then we need to check if uh, so if 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 the words array now has zero elements in it, then we have finished, right? And we should be able to do some stuff. So we want to do things like figure out the time that it's taken and figure out um, some other stuff like the words per minute, which we need the time for. And I've just realized I haven't even done the timer yet. We, we can do that. Uh, so if, and this is going to be cool, not, so that's what that uh, exclamation mark's for, uh, this state.words.length. Oh, look at that. He's not actually saying equals zero. Oh, no, I don't need to do that. Because all this is doing, this is evaluating to what's known as falsy. And if this happens to be zero, it's going to be falsy. Well, no, if this is zero, it's going to be truthy, and then we're negating it. No, it's going to be falsy, and then we're going to negate it. So it's going to be true, which will mean we'll go into the if statement. Daft. But anyway, that's sort of like an idiomatic way of doing that. Why did I close out of them? I don't know. Okay, right. Uh, so if we check finish, then what we need to next do is do some timings checks, but we need to actually do some other stuff first, we need to say on word change, when this is called, we want to check if this um, state started. Mm, yes, if it started, then we need to, well, we're saying if, if we haven't started this and we need to add started, we'll create a quick boolean. So we'll do, uh, if, if we haven't started, then we want to actually start a timer. So we'll do boolean. Uh, and another thing, what I want to do here is I'll create a start date as well while I'm here. Or we'll start time. Start time. Mm, yeah, that'd be fine. And I want to do this. I want to create date stroke null. Ooh. So this isn't optional, but I do want it to be, uh, it can be null. So what we can do here is we can say started. We default that to false. And then uh, start time 
we can make that null. And it's totally fine with that, because we've got date or null. It's a union type. There can be either date or null. Um, right. Do, 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 do. Uh, what is next? Where was I even doing things? I don't know. Where I even am I? So if it's not started, uh, then what we need to do is we need to start the timer. Okay. We can say this set state uh, started equals true. Start date. Uh, start time is equal to new date. Now I don't recommend using JavaScript dates for anything ever, except in this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, normally you should use uh, moment.js as opposed to using dates because moment.js is far better. Uh, and dates are spurious across time zones and across browsers and they're awful. And trust me, just don't use them. Um, right, so now we've set the state uh, if it's not started. So if, it's, if this is false, i.e. the very first time this gets called, we're going to start a timer. We're going to set this to a new date, which will be the time that we start typing something. Then, once we've finished, we want to check. Well, we want to. We're going to need to check something. And actually, I'm going to show you why I've done this null thing here, right? Just as an example, I'm going to do. Uh, we need to get time in milliseconds that it's taken. So how do we do that? We need to do const time millis number well I don't need to do that really because it's it'll infer the type pretty well but we can do new date the new date means now then if I get the time from that which I think is in milliseconds then do this state start time get date get time get time yeah of course get time what am I doing get date for Okay, it should moan at me. It is moaning at me. It's moaning because the object is possibly null. So right here, where I'm calling uh, this state start time, it could potentially be null, right? So this 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 get time could be raise a null pointer exception because this is null here, and this can be null. It's not necessarily null. Now, one way we could fix this is by doing this. So no, nah, no, nah, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. And now it won't let me set this as null, blah -de blah -de blah But obviously it makes sense for it to be null, so I've set it as null. It will moan at me for this reason. So what? how do we fix this? Well, easiest way to fix it in this case is just to do a uh, if not this state start time. So again, another falsy check. That's going to basically say if the variable isn't present, then what we want to do is do nothing. All right? If it's null, oh, I've done it wrong. I've done it the wrong way around. I bet you I have. I have. Uh, sorry, I need to be this way around. So if this happens to be present, i.e., not null, this will evaluate to truthy, which will then put us into the if statement and it stops moaning. And now it's moaning about this not being a sign of value because we're not actually doing anything with it. Oh well, oh well, oh well. But now we need to calculate, use this to actually calculate the words per minute. So how can we calculate the words per minute? Now I have written the formula down because there's actually a whole like a whole debate on how you should calculate words per minute. I'm just picking like one of the ways of doing it. So we're gonna do words per minute. And what's this argument? What's this gonna take? Well, we're gonna pass the cars type, the number of characters typed. And this is actually going to be, yes, it will include the spaces, even though I'm not checking it against the spaces in the words. Uh, number, no, that's not, yes, that is a number, yes. Millis, so the milliseconds, that will also be a number. This is going to return for us a number, i.e. the words per minute. Uh, we're going to do a little thing. I don't need any um, squigglies and I also don't need a return statement because when we do functions like this, typically it'll be on one line, but because of how I've got the, the, the thing set up so you can all see it, it won't fit on the one line in screen. So we're going to do it on two lines, but I don't need to return anything because it's going to implicitly return things. So how do we calculate the words per minute? We do math or maths floor cars typed divided by 
five, which gets you roughly the number of words you've typed, divided by the millis in minutes, which will be divided by 6,000. Uh, and I also probably want to add one of those there. And do I need anything else? No, that's fine. So then we can get the words per minute. So I do const WMPM uh, and do words per minute. This state type test dot length to get the cars, the number of characters in that in the actual sentence we're going to type. Obviously, we need to check that. We don't need to check what the user's actually typed in because obviously, if if we're getting to this point, if we've if this is correct, they finished. Well, then they've definitely typed this. Uh, pass in the milliseconds, and then once we've done that, we're going to set. Uh, we'll actually display this to the user, so we need to actually have a state for this. So we'll do this set state uh, wmpm, and then we'll do no, 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 no. We'll call it words per minute. Yeah, words per minute, and we'll do w like that come up here and we can do uh, words per minute and again this could be uh, this could be a number or it could be null uh, and what's it moaning at now it's moaning at something else which I'll fix because I need the words per minute I don't necessarily need to make this null but I'll show you why I think making it null makes sense because we're going to do a conditional to display this to the user uh, why is it moaning? Line 29. Ooh, we'll go to line 29. It's moaning because I have done this again and I need to do an equals there. There we go. That's all going to work. So we haven't looked at what's ha actually happened on the screen for a while, but at the moment, nothing particularly interesting is happening. Um, but if I was to type in this, ah, okay. So now the one, the one progress we've made, bit of progress we've made is that now is actually figuring out uh, that we're on the right word because obviously we're taking each time we get a, a word right we are taking a word out of the words list so then we're always comparing against the the most the, the zero th the first word in the array which because we've taken words out will always be the the next word we need to type correctly right uh, where are we uh, I don't even know Oh yes, I do know. Uh, this is getting bloody long. So I'm probably not going to do the refactor in this video. I might do it in another video. But uh, what do we need to do next? We need to display the words per minute to the user. And there's another thing I want to do as well, very quickly, just a extra cheeky little thing. It'll take 10 seconds. But I want to do... Uh, so we've got the correct count. What do I want to display? So uh, if, if we were to swap this, this uh, test your typing screen, speed scrub because obviously once you're typing we already know that you're testing your typing screen scrub so what we can do is we can let's do this state words per minute is that what I, I did call it that not WMPM uh, and we can check if that's truthy or not so we're going to use a ternary statement here which is basically like an if statement and then I'm going to do some string interpolation and we'll say uh this state uh, words per minute WMPM and then we'll come on to the next line do a little thing like this it's moaning at me because I have not got the, oh my god there we go uh, what I haven't done is close this off should stop moaning now Mm, no, because I've done it the wrong way round. So we will insert this here. Okay, now it stops moaning. Um, that looks okay. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, does this need to be a string? This needs to be a string. That's what it's moaning, I think. Mm, I don't think so somehow oh yeah it's there okay that's where we need the thing mm, what are you talking about Willis does this need to be double no it doesn't 
Why is this wrong? Ah, aha. I was I was doubly wrong because this is in the wrong place, obviously. This needs to go... Okay, now it's working. So if I was to quickly go back here and we type in... Uh, oh my god. This is the sentence to type. It changes to your words per minute. And obviously that's a horrendous speed. That is not in, even enviable. I made many mistakes there. It was terrible. It was awful. But that gives you an idea of the work of your uh, typing speed, right? And there's nothing else to type, so it won't actually do anything. But it should, if I was to carry on typing, do nothing, which is exactly what you want it to do. Come back here. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is just keep track of what the current word is. And um, so the way we can do that is we can take this entered tech, uh, this thing here, the type test, and we can highlight the the word. So to do that, let's quickly go to app.css and we'll create a little thing called um, a class called entered. Oh no, we'll do current word and we'll say uh, color is red. Just, you know, why not? And then we'll do a BD, get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, and then what we want to do is, instead of doing this uh, state type test, I want to do, instead, we can use the array, we can say words, and we want to do uh, words map word, so this is going to take a nice little higher order function, word, word, if the word is equal to this state words, so if, if, if the word we're currently looking at is the first word, i.e. the current word, because obviously this is always going to have, the first item is always going to be the item we're working with. If that's the case, then we want to uh, return a class, an EM, so that's bold, with a class name current word, and I want to pass in the word like that, and I have a space afterwards because this is the array of words that doesn't have any spaces in it. If that's the case, uh, do that. Otherwise, we want to just return word plus space. I think I have a feeling I've got something terribly wrong there. I don't know what it is, though. Why is it moaning about a comma? What, what comma? What are you talking about, Willis? Why is it moaning about a comma? I'll explain what the function is doing as soon as I figure out what on earth it's moaning about. What? What comma? There should no be... What? This is daft. There's definitely not a comma that's supposed to be there. What are you talking about, Willis? Mm, ah, yes, I know what the problem is. See here, I should have closed this. Because I haven't closed it. Okay, right. So now I've done that, we can explain what this function is doing. Uh, this state what uh, dot words. So we're getting the words array. Map is a function that is going to iterate over every single item in the list, like the for each. And for every single one, it's going to. In this case, we're going to return either the word with a space. If in the case of it not being the first word, right. Or it's going to return this em with the current word class. So it's going to be a red bold word in other cases. This will make more sense when we have a goosey goosey gander at this if you're not familiar with this. See this? It says this is the current sentence to type. If I was to now do this, well, I'll type it right. It disappears and now we've got the. So we can now see in red the current word we need to be typing. Okay. This has gone on long enough. I think that's everything I want to cover. I did want to do the refactor and make this, you know, have separate components and all that sort of stuff. But this has gone on so long that we should probably we call it quits here. Um, so, a little summary of everything we did. Uh, we did some stuff. We looked at what a render function was. We changed this to a class. We did an interface. We learned about why they're important. And we learned about things like type unions. Uh, and also, we learned about the React life, state, uh, life cycle? Like, yeah, I think life cycle is actually the correct word there. Because we learned um, 
about things like component did mount. We learned about things like uh, the on change function, and the on change function is basically what's like making this whole thing work. We also learned about this. This is a function that we pass as a second parameter to this dot set state, which does something. I didn't even know if I ever explained this properly. That does something when the state the state is set. So if once the state the state has been modified, it will then call this function afterwards. Whoa, crazy! Uh, and so now we have a fully working application that's totally amazing. Uh, there is a, a mild issue here. Um, I've just noticed. This is saying, oh, everything should in a list should have a key prop. Um, this is so that React um, knows what things have changed, so it doesn't have to look at every single thing. You give it a unique key. Now, for this, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. It's like a you know six words or whatever that we've got. So ignore that for now. I've explained that in other videos. If you do need to know what it is, I will answer it in the comments at some point in the future. Um, but yes. If you do have any questions or queries or anything like that, let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Put a comment if you have any idea of a video that you want me to make, because I do usually do those, although I have a list of them that I haven't made yet, and I probably should have made. But anyway, as usual, I'm rambling at the end of the video and have no idea how to actually end this. So I will say, Arrivederci, subscribe for more. Bon voyage. <laughs>